Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jay Bell or Jay Cooper Bell. That's my Twitter handle. Um, I'm an Angular GDE and the CTO and co-founder of a company here in Canada on the West Coast called Trust.org. Uh, we built a fundraising platform for charities and nonprofits, uh, trying to make a you know positive difference in the world, um, more than just you know building software to make people money. Uh, so yeah, today uh, we're going to be talking about the new, well, I guess it's not that new now. Uh, there's been so much come out in Angular recently that uh, it's hard to keep up with everything. But uh, as of, I think, it, I think Addy said 14.2, the new image directive, uh, the optimized image directive. The Angular team worked with the Chrome Aurora team on this. Um, I believe they did it with Next.js first and then they did Angular afterwards. Um, but it's essentially just an Angular directive like, we, that we, like we've seen everywhere else, except it helps optimize your images and make sure that you're following the best standards possible. Um, we should be building software we should be building functional pieces for users and not having to worry about all these implementation details. There's a lot of different things that you can do with images in the browser with all the different options. And like, if you ever go to the, the MDM page, there's just so much stuff there. Um, you shouldn't have to worry about that. You should worry about building software for your customers and then let tooling handle these, say, best practices and stuff for you. Um, so that's kind of what we're gonna go over today. Think I was gonna do live coding, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, but I was a little worried about that. But after watching all the talks this morning, I, I, I think I'm more comfortable because <laughs> a lot of people are doing live coding, so I'm not the only one. So that's good. Um, okay, so left IDE. This is the Angular code. Uh, right, we have a browser loaded up with this uh, Angular app. This is just an image I pulled off of our CDN. Um, it is so if we can see this. The image is currently 1.1 megabytes. So this is just taking the image, loading it directly into the DOM and um, yeah, rendering the page. As you can imagine, uh, loading a 1.1 megabyte file on every page load, even if it's cached, is a lot, right? Um, there's no need to be, to be loading that, that large of an image. So what can we do? Um, there's a lot of different methods we can use Oh, zoom in, Lars is saying, on the, the dev tools. Can someone tell me how to zoom on the dev tools? Because I don't actually know. I'm watching the comments. Control it, plus. Sorry? Con command plus? Yeah, or I guess command plus. Yeah. Ah, there we go. I've never actually done that in my life. Someone give me the thumbs up or thumbs down in the chat if that text is good enough, and I'm going to continue talking. Um, so there's a lot of different things that we can do here with um, optimizing images. You know, don't load them if they're not in view, resize them, uh, all preload, pre-connect, all of these things. The image directive helps us with all of those things. So how do we do this? Well, the title of my talk is, is it's as e easy as source to ng-source. And I'm not joking. All we have to do is switch it to that. And now, um, Oh, editor zoom as well. Okay, thanks. Lars helping me uh, real time update font sizes and stuff like that. Okay, so um, ng source, we switched this. Now this doesn't get us literally every feature that it's part of the image directive, but it does get us uh, quite a bit of stuff. So we have our, our image here. It's still the 1.1 megabyte image because we're not we're not resizing it, we're not compressing it, we're not doing any of that stuff. But what what this directive automatically does for us just by changing source to ng source is add this loading lazy tag, fetch priority auto um, stuff like that. So now the browser is like, okay, well I know how to you know more optimally than before render this image. It's not completely optimal, um, but luckily. Thanks to the Angular team, when you add this and your setup for the images isn't optimal, Angular's going to tell us. So if we go to the console, we can see these warnings here. We're all pretty used to these warnings. Uh, here, let's increase that a little bit more. Um, we're all pretty used to these warnings. You know, we've seen them before, like the expression change after check there, you know, stuff like that, right? So um, it's going to say like, hey, you're doing this thing, but it might not be exactly right kind of thing, right? So um, first one, it's going to tell us if the aspect ratio we're loading the image with isn't correct. 
based on the actual size of the image. So um, you can see that this is the, uh, it's saying that the intrinsic size isn't right. So intrinsic image size 1080 by 607, um, but the supplied width is 1080 by 720. So let's just change this to 607. It's going to reload. Now that's gone. You don't need to worry about, you know, figuring out um, what the sizes are, what the correct size is, just like kind of pick something. Um, also, one thing that you can do here, this width and height, typically like before this, you would want them to be exact um, to allow the browser to optimize things as best as possible. But because of all the work that's happening underneath, if you know your image is just 16.9, you can always go 16.9 too, because um, it looks like the image isn't exactly 16.9 in this case, but um, what it uses does this, what it uses these for is determining if the aspect ratio is correct so that it's not, you know, squeezing this way or squeezing this way, depending on how you're loading the image, whether it be like, you know, object fit cover or whatever the other object fit one is. So that's the first one. Already our image is better. That's going to improve image loading on our page just inherently. So the next one here is this, the image directive is telling us, hey, you're loading this image and it's in the LCP, the largest contentful paint. So it, it, it matters to the initial page load, but the image isn't marked as priority, right? Just by adding this directive, we've actually added the loading lazy flag to it, right? But we don't actually want this specific image to load lazily. We might want one down that's down farther down the page or below the fold to load lazily but we don't want this one to load lazily. So what we can actually do is just add priority tag. Um, now, this warning won't show up for images that are farther down. Uh, there's an LCP detector uh, built into Angular for this so that this warning will show up for any image that is part of the LCP that doesn't have this priority tag. So if we save that, now that warning's gone. We have another one we'll get to in a second. But if we inspect it again, we can see that now loading is set to eager. So it says, just do it, get the image right away. And fetch priority is high. So fetch priority is loading says, load this at this point. Fetch priority says, in terms of all the other things that you're doing, do it high. So here we're loading it right away with a priority of high. So it should be one of the first requests um, based on all of the other legacy reasons of why browsers load scripts and CSS and images and et cetera, et cetera. But by setting these two, by setting the one property, the priority property, we're already improving the image loads. And this will improve your, you know, your LCP scores and stuff like that. Um, when, you know, running your lighthouse tests or your web test thing, right? Stuff like that. So, which will help your SEO as well. So that's what we can do there. Um, then we have another warning here. So you can see that they just keep coming, right? It's like, okay, you optimize that. Let's move on to the next thing. Then the next thing, right? So what it's, what it's telling us here is, um, hey, you're loading this image and this image matters, but you're not actually, um, you're not pre-connecting to the domain um, correctly uh, because you're missing this, this pre-connect href here. Um, so we can add this, um, this URL as a pre-connect, um, but, and, and into the index.html. So if we add the, oh, oh, there we go. If we add this to the index.html, this warning will go away. Although that being said, relation pre-connect, href, and then this. I, oh, HTTPS. On oh, warning's gone. Now, now we're now we're pre-connecting, so it knows right away um, what you know what domain to pre-connect to. Now, there's a couple. Um, there's some more things that we can do here. This is just optimizing the different directives that are on the image tag itself. 
um, but our image is still 1.1 megabytes. So even though we're loading at high priority, and even though you know it's fetching and you know eagerly and all this kind of stuff, it's still massive. We don't want it to be massive. Now the Angular image directive allows for these what are called image loaders. Um, they have they have some pre-built ones here for Im ImageX, uh, ImageKit, Cloudinary, Cloudflare image resizing. Um, I actually there we go. Um, I built a custom one for loading from uh, uh, Cloudflare and S3 using uh, Sharp in a Lambda function, which is what we're going to use here. Won't go into the implementation details of that because it doesn't really matter. Um, we're talking specifically about the fact that we're using a uh, image loader more than anything. So let's go to our app module and provide our custom image loader. You would do the exact same thing if you were using one of the pre-built ones. It'd just be, you know, provide Cloudinary image loader or provide whatever. So now what this does is instead of loading the uh, actual image, um, that like the source that we provided, it'll run it through our image loader and then load that into our source instead so that you can do things like compress the response or return it in a better format. You know, some browsers support WebP, maybe your image is stored in a JPEG format, uh, stuff like that. So now we can see that the image still looks the exact same, right? That's what we want. Um, and then uh, where, yeah, so, and we're loading it 1080 by 607, right? So our rendered size is still like really big, but if we want to fix this 1.1 megabyte size, we can actually provide um, image source sets, or we, we don't provide image source sets. Image source sets are, are a way for the browser to know, hey, on this screen size, load this, or on this screen size, load, you know, this size of the image kind of thing, right? With the um, it optimized image directive, we can just provide it a list of sizes. So we can say, you know, like 100W, uh, 300W, and 500W. Now the optimized image directive is actually going to automatically create and generate these source sets for us into the DOM so that we don't need to worry about this. Uh, we can just say, here's the three sizes, pick the best one possible. Um, and we can see that here in the DOM. Hopefully you guys can read that perfectly fine. I'll increase it a little bit more. So we have our original source, right? 1.1 megabytes. Um, and then we have these different sort sizes here. And this is automatically being um, generated for us, right? All these image, different image source sets. Although it's using the wrong, um, oh yeah, that's why. Um, so right now it's, it's using the wrong domain, right? Um, well, we actually wanted to, to use our, our cloud front do domain. So this is a very much like Cloudinary or um, Cloudflare image resizing, stuff like that. It's actually like a CDN that you can request an image from with some parameters and it'll resize it on the fly and then cache that like resized image for you so that you don't need to worry about um, all of the, you know, custom, you know, save the image in all these different formats and different sizes and correctly load the right one, right? So if we look now, this image is still here, still the same size. It still looks great, right? Like we don't need to be loading a one megabyte image into our DOM because it's just so big. But if we look into the, look in here, now the file size is 61.7 kilobytes just by using an image loader instead. That's wildly smaller, right? So it's just the, the image directive is deciding what size actually needs to be pulled and then automatically pulling that size of the image for you. So now what we're doing is instead of lazily loading a one megabyte image with an auto priority, we're eagerly loading a 61 kilobyte image at high priority. So it'll be there right, right away on the page. 
Um, if we go back to our console, we're going to see now that we need to add a different um, pre-connect because now we're actually pre-connecting to the, you know, the CDN is going to auto resize all this stuff for us. So let's just go add this pre-connect and get rid of that, that warning. There we go. Now it's gone. Now the what the really cool thing here is that um, we're using SSR um, and there's an additional piece of improvement that you get on SSR. Uh, there's an uh, there's a a feature in browsers called where is it now? We can preload images um, in the head tag, so they're actually available to us during the page rendering time. So if you render your page on SSR and then return it to the client, this link tag that marks this specific image with that format, that sizing, all of the nice things um, will be in your head tag. So it'll just automatically load it for you uh, right away when the page loads because it was added via, via SSR. Um, this is actually one of the, the I, I helped contribute to the image directive when I, when I first found out about it last year at NGConf. So that was really cool to see. Um, but yeah, that's that, that that's pretty much it. That's the that's the optimized image directive. We can improve your page loads, your LCP um, bandwidth used, all with just a single directive, and let Angular handle all the crazy image stuff for you. So that's it. Um, I